Welcome back. Where we're standing a few short months ago was a wheat field alongside I-29 between Fargo and Grand Forks, North Dakota. But now it's acting as a central hub for materials production for this DOT project where we're taking concrete and asphalt blending together into North Dakota spec salvage base. So on this project, there's about 10 miles of interstate that's been reclaimed and brought here to the site, comprising of 140,000 tons of concrete and 140,000 tons of asphalt that'll be combined into the final base material. So here's two very good examples of what the raw material looks like when it comes off the road. The general contractor on this job is putting a lot of work into prepping the material so it's easily crushable by us. Typically when you're dealing with concrete, rebar is a necessary evil. It's placed in there for structural integrity, but it's a huge nuisance when you're reprocessing the material. As you can see here, you have a little bit of everything. You have big chunks of rebar, you have wire mesh, effectively still holding the concrete together. Um, that can really cause a problem in the crushing, but you'll see later on we have magnets implemented to help mitigate that issue. Moving over to the asphalt pile, we have a variety of size of material. Some of the stuff came off with a milling machine, some of it was loaded out with an excavator. To help blend everything together before it goes into the crusher, we take the front end loader and mix it 50-50. So some chunks like this get busted up very easily and feed into the crusher a lot smoother. So as the material was hauled off the road and placed here, we placed the asphalt millings on the north end and the concrete on the south end so the loader operator can pick and choose and blend it as need be to hit that 50-50 blend so we have a consistent feed into the jaw. The jaw we have set up here is a KPI 3055. Um, does a really good job of processing uh, the asphalt and the concrete. Um, doesn't really struggle with it much unless you do get a big chunk of asphalt in there. It can kind of chew on it. Uh, for lack of a better comparison, just like bubble gum. So that's why it's critical. What the loader operator does is critical. You get the stuff blended in so it feeds in and flows into the cone smoothly. So once it comes out of the jaw, um, it passes underneath the magnet conveyor. That's gonna pull out any rebar or anything that uh, can't go into the cone and kick it off into one of the dumpsters. Uh, from there, it goes to a transfer conveyor, falls into the back of the cone crusher, runs up the overhead, hits the first screen box, fines are segregated and pulled out, and then any rocks um, go into the cone crusher for final sizing down to that one inch. From there, it hits our scale conveyor and on the telestacker uh, onto the final product pile. Simple as that. This is a really nice, tight, concise setup, but there's a lot of key components, starting with the guy running the loader, all the way down to the magnets that really make this run smoothly. Here we have our final product. 
taking a look at the rock, you can see the concrete and the asphalt, and this is gonna set up in conjunction with the fines to make a really nice road-based material with the added benefit of it being 100% recycled. So, recycled aggregates, what's the big deal? Well, firstly, there's a reduced environmental impact because we don't have to harvest new resources. Secondarily, there's a huge cost savings in using an already existing product on site. You've seen it go through the crusher. Let's go out on the road and take a look at it in its final use. We're on the cell phone section of the project where you can see our aggregates in their final use. There's about 10 miles of this laid out so far at 12 inches deep. This stuff is compacted, watered, and ready for concrete. That's a wrap for this video. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Like, subscribe, and comment what you want to see on the next one. Thanks.